Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Pond, I'm a cardiologist. I'm going to spend a few minutes today uh, telling you about the function of the heart. Uh, I'm going to start off by describing the mechanical parts of the heart and then uh, we'll touch on the electrical system of the heart. Uh, let me start off by uh, saying that the heart is divided into a right side and a left side. Blood flows to the right side of the heart, from the right side of the heart to the lungs, from the lungs to the left side of the heart, from the left side of the heart, and then back out to the body. So the right side of the heart is made up of um, two main structures, the right atrium and the right ventricle. The right atrium actually um, is the collecting chamber for blood coming from different parts of the body that's being delivered from these big, these big veins, which are called vena cava. There's a superior vena cava, which means the top vein, big vein, and then there's the um, inferior vena cava, which is the big vein uh, collecting blood from the lower part of the body. The, all the blood then goes to the right atrium, which is this structure right here that you can see from the outside. When we look on the inside, you can see the openings of these big veins, the, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. So blood collects here, blood then moves and is squeezed into the right ventricle, which is this um, sail-shaped structure um, and it's a sail shaped structure because the right ventricle muscle is a little bit thinner than the left ventricular muscle so um, the left ventricle occupies a bigger part of the heart than the right ventricle and that's because the pressure um, on the right side is lower so once the blood collects in the right ventricle the blood is squeezed out um, to through the pulmonic vein uh, through the pulmonic valve. So one thing to realize in order to keep blood moving in the right direction of the heart, you need valves. Valves um, open only in one direction. So in the case of this valve here, the tricuspid valve, blood will only go from the right atrium to the right ventricle. When the right ventricle squeezes and pushes blood out of it, out of its chamber, the tricuspid valve closes and blood flows through the pulmonic valve. You can't see that here, but imagine the, the pulmonic valve sitting right here and blood going to the pulmonary artery. Now we call this an artery because blood is going away from the heart. It's going away from the heart, in this case, the right side of the heart to the lungs. And since this is blood coming from the rest of the body um, that has um, low oxygen, it's being delivered to the lungs to uh, collect oxygen, and then once the blood is oxygen rich, it goes from the lungs back to the heart through these four veins. And these are big veins, they're called pulmonic veins. Pulmonic means lung, so these are lung veins. And remember, veins means anytime blood is flowing to the heart. So this is blood flowing from the lungs to the heart, in which case, in this case, it's the structure of the heart known as the left atrium. And you can see we're looking at the back of the heart, and the key thing to remember about the left atrium is that even though we call it left, it's actually the chamber of the heart that's furthest to the back. So closest to, to your actual back um, would be this chamber called the left atrium. So blood collects here in the left atrium, freshly oxygenated from the lungs, gets pushed from the left atrium through the mitral valve. So the mitral valve opens when blood is flowing from left atrium to left ventricle. And the left ventricle you can see is more of a rounder type chamber and with thicker muscle compared to the right ventricle. And that's because the pressure um, on the left side and the pressure in which the left ventricle has to create to get blood out of the heart and into the rest of the body is much higher than what the right ventricle has to deal with. So once the left ventricle fills with blood, it pushes blood through the um, 
actually it pushes through the aortic valve. So the mitral valve closes. Remember, valves only open in one direction. The mitral valve closes, aortic valve opens, and blood flows out through this aorta to all parts of the body, including the brain through the branches known as the carotids and through other parts of the body, including the stomach and legs, down to the descending aorta. So now you know how blood enters the heart and how the heart squeezes blood to the lungs to get oxygen-rich blood from the right side, um, and then from the lungs back to the left side of the heart um, and back out through the body. So now that's the mechanical part of the heart. The heart also has an electrical system. And the electrical system is less obvious. It's a bundle, it starts with a bundle of nerves called the sinus node that's um, up in the right atrium. So um, this is known as the sinus node and it's the natural pacemaker of the heart. It sets the rhythm. So if you're sitting in your chair at your desk, your heart rate may be 60 beats per minute. When you're out running around, you may um, have a heart rate of 120 beats per minute, in, in which case this, this, that's increase in heart rate is due to the sinus node doing its job. Now the sinus node sends a signal down to the bottom chamber of the heart to tell the bottom chamber to contract. So it, it starts by telling the top chamber to contract. So, um, and then once that contracts the, and the blood has filled the left ventricle, the signal will have passed through a bundle of nerves called the AV node down through the dividing wall of the heart known as the septum to the left and right side of the heart. Once those um, bundles are energized, those will um, tell the left and right chambers to contract and send blood either from the right ventricle out to the lungs or the, or the left ventricle out to the rest of the body. Now, you can hear the heart, right? You can use it with a special piece of equipment called a stethoscope to listen to heart sounds. Now, there's two heart sounds, and you'll hear when you listen to an, um, a normal heart, the sounds will be lub-dub, lub-dub. The first lub is, the, is when the heart um, squeezes and the tricuspid valve um, and mitral valve close. That's the first set of sounds. And then the second sound is the um, opening of the um, pulmonic and aortic valves, and especially the aortic valve that you can see here. So, um, in, as well as closing of those valves. So that's how you um, can listen to the heart and hear the sounds and hear how the heart is working. Now, what happens when parts of the heart stop working? So there's different parts of the heart, and um, like we mentioned, and one of those parts are the valves. Those valves can um, stop working for a number of reasons. Um, for example, the mitral valve may become leaky and cause patients to develop heart failure. So when there's a leaky valve, blood doesn't move forward. It, it starts backing up into the lungs and other, in the right side of the heart, and patients start um, getting fluid overloaded um, because the, the heart can't keep the blood moving forward. So sometimes we fix those types of valve problems by doing open heart surgery to replace the valves. Um, another problem that can happen in the heart is um, what's commonly called a heart attack. Now a heart attack is when a blockage occurs in the arteries that feed the blood to the muscle of the heart. And you can see the arteries on this model here depicted in um, these spaghetti-like ribbons of red across the heart. And there's three main coronary arteries. There's the right coronary artery. These are called coronary arteries, by the way. And there's a left anterior descending coronary artery and a circumflex coronary artery. Now, normally those uh, you, coronary arteries are nice and round, and this model here shows you in an enlarged view what the normal coronary artery looks like, and the coronary artery has different layers to it. Now, when somebody has a problem with the coronary artery and the coronary arteries 
get narrowed, um, that um, can cause a problem where the coronary artery get, gets so narrowed that blood can't flow through it. And sometimes this narrowing, which is caused by cholesterol buildup in the wall of the heart, breaks loose and causes a clot and causes what's known as a heart attack. So how, what happens when we have a heart attack? Patients will develop chest pain and chest pain can feel like somebody's uh, sitting on your chest. It's severe and it's one of the most common reasons people go to the emergency room and need emergency treatment. Um, for a heart attack, emergency treatment includes threading a very thin tube up from either the uh, artery in your wrist to the heart or from the groin to the heart and opening up the blockage. So you can thread a tube and then a wire down into this blockage and then you can deliver a clip down into the blockage to open up that blockage and restore normal blood flow to the heart. Um, that's um, one of the um, treatments for a heart attack and when there's a problem um, with the coronary arteries. But what, what's more important to realize is that the cause of a heart attack is something that starts at a young age. And these um, reasons that cholesterol builds up in these arteries and eventually can cause a heart attack is, is due to uh, factors that can be changed early in life. And that includes making sure you get regular exercise, um, you know, uh, maintaining good weight, um, and watching your blood pressure and, um, and watching your cholesterol level, your blood cholesterol level. And um, one of the biggest causes of heart attacks is also um, smoking. So those, modifying those factors um, to good levels um, can really minimize and reduce the risk of a heart attack. Uh, sometimes the heart can have other problems, and that includes the um, electrical system of the heart. So like we talked about earlier, the heart has an electrical system that starts with the sinus node. Sometimes the sinus node can get scarred, that, which happens with age. And uh, people in their 80s, some people may have significant scarring that causes that electrical system to stop working, in which case we have to put in a device called a pacemaker. The pacemaker is um, a device where we run electrical wires down through the um, upper vein of the heart down to the right atrium and right ventricle to stimulate the heart using a special uh, device uh, called a pacemaker that sends an electrical signal and stimulates the heart muscle and, re and restores normal heart, contract, um, heart function by restoring normal heart rhythm. So those are some uh, key bits of information about how the heart works as well as when the heart doesn't work right due to problems with mechanical issues or even electrical issues. So thank you for your attention and I hope you had a uh, good learning opportunity today.